Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another art journal video. Today I'm going to create a double page in my mixed media journal and I did get a lot of questions asking me to share some ideas on uh, double page art journals using my latest collection. So that's what I'm going to do today. However, keep in mind that I do share lots of uh, short videos. These are like um, quick studies on composition and uh, color combinations and some ideas Ideas. and uh, they are great for me because um, <laughs> it's summer here in Greece and uh, during summer I take things slow so instead of filming the big videos I like to uh, do a little bit of an art exercise on my mini journal and I always share them with you. So today's project is actually a way to show you that from those smaller ones you can actually get some ideas and create a bigger one. So what I'm doing here today is a combination of two of the mini shorts, mini art journal videos that I did share uh, about a week ago. And I'm sharing first the wax resist technique. So all I'm doing is applying a couple of uh, acrylic paints directly on top of my paper. I'm mixing the colors. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to cover up this layer completely. So you can go really crazy with colors here. I just went with two shades of blue and I'm going to cover up completely everything. I'm not trying to get uh, a perfect uh, blending. As you can see, I like to have lighter and darker areas. And here comes my favorite uh, background stamp of all times. This is the one that I designed and it is uh, the first stamp set that I ever came up with. So I find that it is so versatile that I keep on using it again and again. I'm going to do some stamping on the background very randomly. I'm going to mix text as well as circle stamps just to add some different uh, visual texture back there. It doesn't have to be perfect again. You can see I'm just going randomly here and there. I'm not making an effort to do the perfect stamping. I'm going to cover up everything later on and only bits and pieces are going to be shown on the finished project. So at this stage I don't know what I'm going to stick or where I'm going to stick uh, uh, my focal points. So I'm just playing with the layer and just having fun with what it is at the moment. I'm not overthinking of what is going to happen later on. I am stamping everything with black ink and by the way this is archival ink to make sure that this is not going to smudge later on. That's really important for the technique that I'm going to show you today. Now I'm going for the wax resist technique. This is beeswax and um, this technique actually works with uh, Vaseline as well. I am going to use a very stiff brush and I'm going to apply this uh, wax in different areas of my project. Of course, I'm, uh, I tend to go where I did the stamping and I'm just adding some brush strokes here and there. If you cannot tell what you have already done, just tilt the pages on the light like I'm doing here so you can see exactly where that wax is. And uh, you can go as and add as much as you like or as little as you like. You will see that at the end we are going to get a peeled paint effect. So uh, I'm happy with uh, the amount of wax I have applied. To clean up my brush that I use for the wax, I just uh, rub it on my paper towel and I keep those together. This is a brush dedicated for this technique. Then grab another color of acrylic paint and apply it all over the place. Don't freak out, we are going to be able to reveal what's underneath in all the areas where we used the wax. You see here I'm using my white brush just to cover up a bigger area really quickly and I'm being generous with my acrylic paint. I'm going with ivory here as you can see so that I can completely cover up and uh, not see anything that's underneath. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other page and then let this paint dry. You can go ahead and heat set it with your heat tool or just wait for it to dry on its own. Then I'm going to grab a spatula and I'm going to scrub over the paint. You will find that the paint peels off where the wax was underneath because it doesn't allow the top paint to stick underneath. So I'm going to repeat this process and again remember you can have as much of this effect as you want depending on how much wax you applied in the beginning. 
It's a really fun technique. You can even have your background with pattern paper and by peeling off this uh, layer, you will be able to see bits and pieces from the pattern paper underneath or the rice paper, whatever you use. You can even go with uh, lots of colors and uh, just allow the color to pop throughout all those uh, peeled paint areas. And also this technique looks amazing if underneath you use the pattern paper that has a wood grain look. So you will be able to see the wood coming through that peeled paint effect. Absolutely gorgeous. And now you know I like splatters, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm using uh, the same acrylic color that I used for the background and I'm adding some blue splatters. And I'm also going to add black splatters as well by diluting black acrylic paint. Now at this stage I usually go with some stenciling or I do some stamping all over. For this background I'm absolutely happy with how it looks. I feel that it doesn't need any um, more visual texture so I'm going to leave it as it is. One of the things that I absolutely love doing on my journals is to create a border. So for this one I'm just going with an alcohol marker. You can use any marker or pencil that you have and I'm going to draw a line all around. Just make sure that before you do that all the paint that you have on your uh, project is completely dry. You don't want to ruin the tip of your markers. Then uh, you can go ahead and color in the outside either by using the same marker or by using acrylic paint. You see here I did go with black acrylic paint and a flat brush. I'm just taking my time, I'm enjoying the process. And now finally it's time to play with the focal points. So I cut out this building from the 8x8 paper pad along with a bunch of flowers. I believe these were from the 12x12 paper pad. So the design that I'm going for is one that I did on one of my mini journals that I shared and I did use the building, embellished it with flowers, but of course I did it in a very smaller uh, size since I used the ephemera building for that design. And here is what I'm talking about. These are the two mini projects that I did and I combined them into today's project. So from the first one I'm actually recreating this composition and from the second one I'm actually using the background. And I want to show you that even from the mini journals that I keep on sharing, which are less than a minute, you can definitely get inspired and create something bigger. All those mini journals are available on my Instagram account, but I also share them here on YouTube. And even on those short videos, you will find a list of supplies if you tap on the three dots of the video. So back into the composition, as you can see, I'm using my glue and I'm sticking everything down. As I stick everything down, I go over it with my glue to cover up completely all the cutouts. I'm doing so because I want to have a non-porous surface because I'm planning to use my big brush markers later on to add some shading and some extra color on my images. Now in terms of glue, you can definitely use any type of glue that you like. I prefer to use matte medium glues because they dry completely matte. I have found that the new glue by Stamperia, which is uh, for rice paper, this is the rice paper glue, uh, is perfect because although it is marketed for uh, rice paper, it works perfectly with paper as well. As you can see, I'm using this one today. It looks milky, but when it dries, it is completely clear, plus it is completely matte. It doesn't leave a shine, it doesn't leave any satin finish. So I tend to grab this one lately. Now, once everything is dry, I'm going to use my scissors and chop off any excess from those uh, cutouts. And you can see here another uh, background that I was preparing. I did film that process. Sometimes I don't have an idea on what I want to do. I just create background just for the fun of it. And uh, sometimes inspiration strikes, I will find the perfect uh, focal point and I will just go ahead and stick it there. I will film that video, obviously, and share it with you when I finish that page. Now I just uh, chopped off those leaves because they were sticking out but I don't want to waste them so I'm just going to glue them behind those flowers. So at this stage my main composition, the background, everything is pretty much ready. You can definitely stop here if you like but here comes the fun of finishing touches. So I'm just uh, uh, enjoying myself here with my mediums. I'm using my white gel pen and this is a Sakura one. Uh, the size is 10 
of the nib, I am going around the border to add a white line. I feel like it is a lovely detail and it gives a finished look into the border. And just like always, you will find everything I'm using linked down below. And also keep in mind, if you are enjoying my bigger videos, make sure to like as well as leave me a comment. And here comes my favorite technique of all times, using my big brush markers to add some tint of color to enhance shadows here and there. These are the big brush markers by Faber-Castell. I'm touching the nib of my brush, adding just a little bit and then smudging it with my finger. I do the smudging because it allows for a soft look. It looks nice and blended. At the same time, this uh, marker is uh, transparent, which means that it tints the um, uh, design underneath, but it doesn't cover up any details. So here I'm doing it with blue over the blue. I will repeat with pink over the pink flowers, but definitely clean up your finger in between. It does work as a tool for this technique, so you need to clean it up in between colors just to avoid any mess. Now keep in mind that these are going to dry permanent, so you have just a few seconds to smudge before it completely dries. Those few seconds are given to you just by using the glue to cover up everything, just because this is a non-porous surface. If you are trying to do this technique directly on top of paper, it's not going to work, trust me. The paper instantly absorbs this and you will not be able to move it around. So I'm going to do a little bit of shading on my building as well. And then I'm going to grab my black markers. Now I have a few sets of black markers. I get a lot of questions about that. Any black markers will do the trick. I like to have sets with different nibs so that I can switch if I need to have a thicker or a thinner line. I'm doing some sketchy lines around some of the cutouts, mainly around the leaves, but I also do it in some of the petals, not all over the place, not perfect lines, always sketchy so they look more organic. And um, I feel like this helps sometimes the design. I don't always do it, but um, if I feel like I need to add some more shadow to help some images pop against each other, I go ahead and do this technique. And then of course you know what's next, I'm going to use my white gel pen and add some uh, white doodling here and there. This always adds some highlights on the images, I feel like it makes them look more whimsical and more fun. I like the look and I always repeat it in my projects. However, always keep in mind that there is no art journal police. You can do whatever you like and whichever technique you feel happy with on your journals. I'm just showing you what works for me, how my pages come together, and you can pick whatever you like, mix and match on your projects. Now, I always like to add a quote on my projects. I have plenty of uh, blank space on one of the pages to, to put together the quote. I'm going with uh, see the beauty around you. I usually go with a bigger font for one of the words that I want to emphasize. And in this case, my word is beauty that I cut out letter by letter by using an alphabet die. And then for the rest of the quote, I'm just going to use my label maker. Again, I'm using my white gel pen to draw some outlines around the phrase as well as add some highlights on the letters. And you all know the finishing touch, I'm just going to add some white splatters all over the place. For that, sometimes I dilute acrylic paint with water. Here I'm just using calligraphy ink, white calligraphy ink. And I usually go with a very thin brush, as you can see, just so that I can get tiny splatters, while at the same time I feel like I have more control on the splattering. So that was the project for today. Here are some close-up photos. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to like and leave a comment. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time.